Okay, so uh, in this session, we'll be discussing about uh, how we can manage the releases and uh, how we can uh, um, manage the schedule for those releases. So to create the releases and to create the cycles, then we have to uh, go to the management module here. And if you expand the management module, you can see religious here. Okay. So the religious module, sorry, uh, yeah, releases module is usually used to maintain the releases and uh, cycles and also the schedule of it. Okay. Now, so uh, yeah, if you want to create the releases now, like okay, so first you create uh, a project folder and uh, yeah so uh, i have got one release already created and uh, in earlier session so uh, i have created the pro project folder called rng chart okay so i don't need to create an another folder because the folder is already there so let's use the existing folder itself okay so yeah i have selected this folder and uh, let me create the release so to create the release and you need to we have a button called new release here or control r is a shortcut key and you just click on new release and when you click on new release and it will display a window called new release window okay so you can see here so this is the new release window and now it will ask you to enter the name of the release and usually you can give like release 1, release 2, release 3 and release 1 is already there so that I'm just giving as a release 2. Uh, but the names can be customized and it depends on your project process and uh, some in some projects uh, instead of giving release 1, release 2, they will give customized names to remember the releases easily. So it depends on what features they are implementing in that release and they will be giving their names. Okay. So, um, but for, I'm giving a, uh, just release to here, and then after giving the release name, you must have to specify the start date and end date. But this is in terms of the execution, it's not the release start date exactly like you know, in terms of development, all those things, but it's only in terms of the execution. Okay, so by when uh, this execution should be started, by when the execution should be started for this release, and by when it has to be completed, that matters here. Okay, so now consider the release 2 will be starting from maybe uh, from 9th onwards and uh, release will be ending on uh, maybe on 30th. Okay, so what, what see here the release start date is on 9th and uh, release end date is 30th of November and then say okay. Now the release has been created. Okay. So the release has been created and you can see a lot of modules have a lot of modules are there here. Okay, so we need to understand each and every module. Oh, sorry, no, not the modules, each and every tab here. Okay. Now, if you see the details tab in the release, and details tab will display just uh, some basic details like you know name of the release or the start date, end date, and uh, you know whatever you have given. But it's a grayed out. But there is another option to edit it. But slowly we will learn it. Release ID is automatically generated from the database. It's a unique number it generates automatically. It's a sequential number. And uh, maybe our previous release might have got one on one zero zero one, and now it's one zero zero two. And if you want to see that, you can see here. So the previous one was generated like this, and the current one is generated as 1002. And also, the important thing that we should know is there is something called requirements assigned to release. This means that, okay, so you have created a release, and how many requirements have been mapped with this release? Since we have not created any requirements or anything, so that you can see it's a zero here. Okay, let it be for now and uh, I don't want anything. Uh, forget about uh, these modules for a while and then I will be coming in detail and then we will be discussing about it like a scoreboard or status or all must plan, everything that we will be discussing. Okay, so uh, we, we should not miss any of this thing and uh, no need to worry about that. Okay, so but for now we just understand how we can create a release and you just select the folder and you click on new release 
and then it will be asking for uh, name and it will be asking for start date end date and then you have to just provide the dates and click on ok and the release gets created once the release gets created and uh, for now i'll be just uh, showing you some one tab that's called as a status tab and remember these numbers and um, in later sessions we are going to work with this again see um, now we can see in the status total days in release has been 22 All right so what does it mean here 22 so it depends on the start date and the end date that what i have given here it's calculated how many days that we have got and the remaining days in the release are 22 because i just created now no days have been elapsed so all 20 days are remaining so it says that number of uh, days and total is remaining <coughs> also you can see something called total instances to release uh, you know, uh, that means that okay so number of uh, test cases uh, needs to be executed in this release it's saying zero because we have not created any test cases and at the same time remaining test instances to not that means that okay how many test cases are supposed to be executed in this release and how many have been executed that's a number it will show here and how many sorry how many to be executed how many have been executed total minus how many have uh, have been executed so you'll get remaining here and it will also calculate depends on number of days and number of test cases it will calculate at the required execution rate that means per day how many test cases need to be executed okay then actual execution rate nothing but how i mean uh, how many are planned or how many required to be executed and how many actually we are executing so that number it will be shown here okay so remember this and the quality tab but there won't be any um, you know it, it's uh, graphs actually but there is no data in this graphs but remember this and we'll be coming back okay now i've created the release and inside release normally we will be planning cycles right but we have two things here one is something called milestone and a milestone is nothing but like okay say um, milestone can be anything now i have uh, 20 days uh, 22 days for the release but maybe you know i'm expecting certain amount of things need to be completed by uh, in five days or you know uh, what's the release start date so release start date is on ninth that's what i've given i guess yeah ninth i have given maybe by fifth uh, I'm expecting maybe a certain uh, amount of a certain percentage of execution to be completed. That's a milestone that I want. Okay. Okay. So th that could be a milestone. But uh, usually we don't uh, create the milestone until unless, uh, you know, uh, we, we have got a solid process. But anyway, let's learn how the milestone, what's a milestone exactly. Okay. I'll say. 10% scope. So 50% execution rate. And tracking date is on 14th. Due date maybe on 15th. So okay. A just milestone has been created. Like, okay, so in case you, you can create a milestone scope here, but uh, what test cases need to be executed by this time and the KPIs and all. Okay, so you can add a KPI, everything that uh, whatever you want here. Okay, so as of now, not required all these things, but I just created here. So inside release, you can create the milestones as well as you can create the cycles and for every cycle again you will be having start date and end date so ideally we execute two cycles in every uh, release so i just uh, i am giving the name as cycle one cycle two cycle three like this okay yeah. 
now so what i have given the name as cycle one and cycle also you should give start date and end date but remember one thing see the release start date is 9th right so the start date cannot be before release start date okay so what i mean to say is a release start date is a 9th so cycle start date must be a 9th or maybe greater also it can be 10th as well or it could be 11 but a cycle start date cannot be 8th now let's see here what i'm doing is i'm selecting as 8th that means the cycle start date i'm giving before release start date okay now you can see here so it says that date cannot be earlier than release start date so that means that the cycle start date cannot be earlier than the release start date so you can select as 9th and cycle one anyway um, I mean, we need to complete by third year. So cycle has to be completed by maybe some 20 second. Okay. And click on OK. After creating the cycle, again, you have something called, you know, pro, a lot of tabs for this again, something called progress. Same numbers you can see, number of days uh, for the cycle, number of days left out, and uh, how many test instances, nothing but test cases were mapped and um, the required execution rate depends on number of test cases mapped and number of four days given also something called coverage progress like how much has been covered how much has been passed how much percentage has been um, you know uh, executed all those things that normally you know the graph will be showing but those are automatic graphs and we don't do anything next quality so the tab quality is nothing but it will show the us you know how the defect opening rate in this cycle and also number of outstanding defects are there this is also showing empty because we have not created any test cases or not executed anything so that's fine we'll be doing it little uh, later and one by one we have to see anyway uh, this is only just for an heads up that i'm uh, giving now information okay next is i'm creating one more cycle here as a cycle two so, um, I mean, uh, in this process or in this project, we'll be doing a minimum two cycles of testing. So, uh, the start date uh, could be um, the second cycle should be starting from 23rd and end date. So, end date cannot go past or, you know, cannot be greater than um, uh, release end date. Now, so release end date is on 30th November. And uh, let's say here, if I select the 1st December, then it shows an error saying that cannot be later than release end date. Cycle end date cannot be greater than release end date. So ideally, the release end date and cycle end date can be same, or maybe our cycle can end earlier than release. Uh, so um, maybe the cycle can close at 29th or 28th. Depends. Okay. Click on OK. So the cycles have been created. And here also you can see some details or progress or attachments, all those. And just remember two things that are what I show now and later we will be coming back to that. Say requirements assigned to the cycle is zero. Test set folders assigned to this cycle is zero. As of now it's being everything is zero. No data is there because I just created only releases and uh, cycles. Okay. So this is how normally you create religious and cycles, nothing else we do. So the summary of this is in the cycles, sorry, in the management module, you just create only religious and uh, cycles and you give the milestones. And for everything you give, uh, you know, schedule, schedule in a sense like uh, what's the start date of it, end date of it. Also for religious, how many requirements have been mapped. Um, uh, how the progress is being made and what's the quality of it like outstanding defects how many other and how the defect opening rate is so you can track everything from uh, you know the management module so this is about the management module not too much here but there are some of the tabs have been left out which i'll be coming later and then i will be giving a detailed information on it thank you